is Bob Sarantino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here with Gianluca De Francesco of Zanatores in Calabria, Italy. So thanks for being here, Gianluca. Thank you. Bob. Hi, Bob. Thank you, Bob, for being here. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, no, the pleasure is all mine. I love talking to, to uh, people in Italy, especially Calabria, because up until about, I guess, 10 years ago, I did not know I had any Calabrian roots. <laughs> yeah, no. Now uh, said you're very proud. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, so with that, my first question for you is, I'm going to assume this, and I think I'm probably right. Your family's been in Calabria for quite some time, yes? Yes, my family probably has been here um, since uh, the beginning of time, probably. But I, I've been doing some research because I do ancestry research, as you know. And I did it as well for myself, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I found out uh, some documents telling that my father's family has been in my father's village since late 1600s. So... Um, I didn't find other documents probably because there aren't. But even, uh, even if my family came in at some point in Calabria, this is part of uh, Calabrian history. Because as you know, because I know you know a lot about Calabria, Calabria is a real melting pot, you know? A lot of different ethnies, different cultures over the centuries have been here moving, I mean, actually, they settled here in Calabria. They merged here in Calabria. You know, Calabria is the is known to be the heart of uh, Magna Grecia, you know, greater Greece. And this is because the Greeks started coming over to Calabria by the end of the 8th century BC, settling here on the coast of Calabria, founding colonies. And those colonies in few centuries became more powerful and more rich than Greece itself. And this is thanks to Calabrian territory that is very rich, rich in minerals, rich in resources. Uh, even today, even, uh, you know, now it's, a, it's known to be a poor area, you know, but actually it's a neglected area. You know, because uh, after the Greeks, we had the Romans, you know, the Romans came in, they took over here in Calabria. They conquered the area. We had, we, Calabria was part of the, of the Roman in, uh, Empire for two cent six centuries, more or less. Then, after the fall of the Roman Empire, the barbarian hordes, then the Byzantines, the Longbirds, the Arabs, all of them wanted to conquer Calabria. They coveted, you know, Calabria was the most coveted land. And this because Calabria, during the medieval times, was the, the granary of Italy, basically. Most of the food was coming from Calabria, vegetables, grain, cereals, you know? And those through, and after the Byzantines, the Normans from uh, Northern uh, France, from Normandy, Northern France, and then the Andrians, again, from France, the House of Aragon from Spain, the Spanish Empire, then uh, the Austrians, then again the Bourbons, the Bourbons, you know, the last kings of Italy. And then, unfortunately, in a way, the unification of Italy, because uh, it, wa it was actually the conquest of Southern Italy. Southern Italy was conquered, you know, and that was the beginning of the end, basically, because the unification, the so-called unification of Italy is one of the main reasons, if not the only reason, for the immigration, the massive immigration from southern Italy that took place around 1880, started around 1880, after the unification of Italy. You know, so Calabria is a real melting pot. You know, if you take is a Calabrian uh, someone, I mean, uh, someone with Calabrian heritage anyway, taking the DNA test, they'll find out that they have a percentage of blood coming from all over the Mediterranean area, including Jewish blood as well. <laughs> so that's why, you know, to be, I mean, Calabrians actually, you know, they have been coming here over the centuries. 
and yeah, then, and, 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 I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, Italian Americans are very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, want to think that, hey, my grandparents and their grandparents came from Italy. I'm 100% Italian. I did my DNA test and it says I'm 40% Greek. That's impossible. <laughs> yeah. Instead, probably <clears throat> if they were from southern, if they are from southern Italy, that's normal. You know? <laughs> uh, right. And I try to explain. I said, I said to me, there's a difference between uh, DNA uh, and uh, your DNA heritage and Italian culture. I said culture is two different things, you know, from 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 DNA. Uh, yes, we celebrate here being Italians and, and doing the best we can to have the food that our grandparents ate and everything like that. And having that Greek blood or Arabic blood doesn't take away from your Italian heritage or culture. No, no, no. At all. It's part of your Italian heritage. Yes, 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 indeed. Uh, so, uh, yeah, interesting thing about, you know, my Calabrian background as... Um, as you know, my, um, even though they lived in Naples for, I, I guess, a hundred years or so, my uh, great grandfather on my paternal grandmother's side uh, was the um, Count of Montebello. And uh, his name was Pier Malo, which originally comes from Spain. And what's, I have a real roadblock because I know Pier Malo came from Spain in around 1550. Uh, and uh, that ancestor was uh, involved in uh, saving a castle someplace. I forget the name of the town. Uh, mm -hmm. But then I have a gap of almost 200 years and I cannot close that gap. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, documents get burnt during wars or earthquakes or something like this, you know. So that's why, but you know, most of the noble families at some point would move to Naples. They would live most of the time where, where the court was, close to the king, basically. Mm -hmm. They still own their property here in Calabria, but most of the time they stayed in Naples. Uh, yeah, and that's true. And I, I found that with all of the, um, the families because I have uh, some family that was from Melise. And the same thing. And I, and I just recently learned on an interview the other day that uh, the nobles in Naples did not pay any taxes. No, no, no. <laughs> the nobles were collecting taxes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> the, the good old days, I suppose. <laughs> um, so now... You're you're in uh, Cantazaro, yes. Where is that in, in, in Calabria? Cantazaro is in the middle, in the center of Calabria. It's right in the center of Calabria, and um, it is the capital town of uh, Calabria of the region. You know, there are twenty regions mm -hmm. in uh, in Italy. Calabria is one of them. It's like a state, like one of the federal states of the USA, but obviously much smaller. Canzaro is the capital town, it's in the center. It's not the biggest. I mean, uh, in the, the, the biggest town in, uh, in Calabria is Reggio Calabria. But Canzaro is in the center and always, uh, throughout history, has always been the center of the administrative power, basically. Catanzaro has always been the most important administrative city in Calabria. But anyway, uh, also, uh, uh, Catanzaro is uh, uh, easily um, accessible from uh, any place you are in Calabria, because Calabria is... Uh, long, I mean, it could look uh, a small area, but instead it's pretty long because it's nearly 300 kilometers long. It is surrounded by the sea and in the middle of the inland, in the middle of the region, there are high mountains. So to move 
through the region, to drive through the region is not so fast. You, it's not even 300 kilometers, you know, you, you would take four, four to five hours. But, you know, Calabria is uh, not just for me, I think, not just because I'm Calabrian, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. <clears throat> and it is very particular because in Calabria you find everything, any kind of uh, scenery, any kind of fruits, any kind of vegetables. It looks like if uh, the whole world is, co is concentrated in few kilometers. You know, there is a, a story that my grandmother used to tell me when I was a, a child, before going to bed. She was telling me, this story over and over, always the same. And I, and I was asking as well for the same story. And that was about the creation of Calabria, how Calabria was created, you know, by God. You know, it started with the creation of the world, that God took six days to create the world. Then the seventh day, he took a rest. And the day after, the eighth day, when he woke up, he realized that he had forgotten Calabria, you know? And because <laughs> he had already used all the matter available to create the, the, the universe, so he decided to take a little piece from each one of the five continents and put them together. And so Calabria was born, was created. And actually in Calabria you find, I mean, in a few kilometers you go from the coast, maybe from a place that could uh, look like uh, California. You go up to the mountains. In a few kilometers, you reach the Sila Mountains in the middle of the, the region that looks like Canada, with valleys, forests, lakes, and everything else. Then you go to the other side, and you end up in Mexico, in a place that looks like Mexico, with the, the cactus, you know, dry land and beaches, you know. So that's why it's fantastic. And also you find, as I told you, any kind of fruits here. Any kind, any kind of fruits, even the ones that you would imagine to find here. For example, the citron. The citron, the, the etrog, basically, what the Jewish call etrog. The best variety of uh, citron grow in the world grows here in Calabria, in northwest of Calabria. And that variety of citron was brought over to Calabria by the Jewish 2,000 years ago, for example. Then we have the bergamot. You know the bergamot? It's a citrus fruit, citrus fruit. That is a natural mutation. It's, it, looks, it looks like a, a grapefruit when it is ripe. It's yellow, but it is not a grapefruit. It's not a, a cross. It is not even a cross between an orange and a lemon. It's another kind of fruit. 98% of the worldwide production takes place here in Calabria because the only other place where you can grow the bergamot is the island of Cyprus. And a small percentage is grown there. The rest here, all around the, the, in the province of Reggio Calabria, because you can grow bergamot only there. I mean, if you can plant it the, in another place, even in Catanzaro. If I plant the bergamot in Catanzaro, I would have the plant, but I wouldn't have fruits. It's very strange. You know, it grows in a very limited area, only 100 kilometers of coast, you know, in this little stretch of coast. <laughs> you can grow bergamot. It's unbelievable. It is used for everything, for perfumes, but now they use it as well to flavor cakes or sweets or um, uh, cookies. But it has always been the main ingredient for the early gray tea, the English tea. The early, early you know, the early gray tea, mm -hmm. it's made with yeah. bergamot. Wow, the that's flavor, fascinating. Bergamot, bergamot. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. <laughs> um, and uh, so, it, so it, it sounds like 
that even because of the way you ex- ex- explained it, it's a, you know a little bit of five different continents. I'm I'm guessing that the um, you know the the cuisine throughout Calabria is vastly different. Yes. Yes, we have many different uh, local recipes, basically. Obviously, the ingredients are more or less the same, you know, the same vegetables. Obviously, a lot of chili pepper. We have 26 varieties of chili pepper here in uh, wow. chili pepper in, in Calabria. But some uh, recipes from northern uh, of Calabria are not used in southern Calabria. And the opposite as well. And also there are areas that have a, a major production. I mean, for example, figs. Northwest of Calabria, in that area, they are specialized in dried figs. And they make them all over Calabria, you can find dried figs. But especially in that area, you find all kinds of figs, even the ones covered with honey, with chocolate, uh, stuffed with almonds, you know, <laughs> any kind of uh, uh, the fix uh, made in different ways. Instead, if you go to the area of Reggio Calabria, for example, you find m- more things made with chili pepper, uh, concussions made with chili pepper, or even special sausages with a lot of chili pepper. For example, the Nduya. I don't know if you heard about it. Yeah. The Nduya now is starting to be known all over the world. It's made with pork meat and chili pepper. It's a spreadable cream, basically. It's a sausage that you can spread on bread, you know, so you can make very good bruschetta. (laughs) (laughs) Very good bruschetta. And also wine. We have a lot of different variety of uh, grapes, of vines, actually, Uh, different varieties, Um, local, from Calabria, that you can find only in Calabria. A lot of DOC wine, you know. And also we have a lot of uh, borghi, we call them small villages. Small old villages up on the mountains, on the hills, very close to the sea. Because anyway, from anywhere you are on the Calabrian coast, in half an hour you are uh, more than 3,000 feet above sea level. So to reach a, a village on the hill, it takes 10 minutes. And those small villages, are, most of them are nearly empty, we could say, because most of the people left for immigration or because they went to live in the major towns or by the coast. And those villages have been left untouched, basically. And they look like, you know, like, like a movie because you see those old houses, you know, the old women dressed in black, maybe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like in the movies, you know, the, the men playing cards, you know, <laughs> and this is something that look, in few kilometers, you go from Catanzaro, that is a normal thriving town, little small town, but anyway, it's a modern town, <laughs> you know, in 30 kilometers, you find yourself, uh, on the set of Cinema Paradiso, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> for example. Yeah. Um, so but that's a that's a good lead into Xana tours, uh, because I know you do tours uh, throughout Calabria, and I think I think the rest of Southern Italy, and yes. um, hopefully things are going to be opening up soon. I'm hoping, I'm praying that we're going to get there in September, but. We'll wait and see, but you've you've sent me some great videos and and photos. So uh, what kind of services do you offer for people with their Calabrian roots to whether they come from a big town or wanted to go to a mountain town? uh, How can you help them? I can basically connect them uh, from the beginning to the end. It depends. Obviously, most of the people have um, already been doing research. You know, because when they get interested in their heritage, they do research in advance. But I can help with research in the city halls, in the register offices and everything else. But most of all, I can organize the tour. I mean, organize their their trip, their journey here to Calabria. 
as the, to the discovery of the of the roots, economic everything, all the land services, you know, restaurants, hotels, all the different locations that we are going to visit. And also depending, on, and also this depends on where they, which is their village, you know, depending which area is, I will show them the, the most important highlights of the territory linked to the, to the story of their village and their family. Because also in Italy, we have minority communities, Albanians, uh, uh, so it depends from where you come from. And also, you know, I've been doing, I, I mean, uh, I, I've been working in the tourism industry for years. Uh, I'm a tour guide. You know, I was, I, I was born <laughs> in this <laughs> business as a tour guide. <clears throat> More than 20 years as a tour guide in Calabria, mainly in Calabria and in the rest of Southern Italy as well. I've been working as well in, in Europe, Northern Europe, uh, basically during winter. I've been, uh, I've been doing winter seasons all over Europe. But from um, 2007, I decided to, uh, to stay here in Calabria and to focus on Calabria leading cultural, cultural tours, mainly in Calabria because I've been leading as well uh, walking tours on the mountains of Calabria. I know, I know the whole territory very, very well, from the mountains to the sea, everything, every aspect, you know. My um, passions have always been history, archaeology. Uh, I study geology, for example, but, you know, <laughs> you know what, what led me to this kind of job uh, it was for sure something good because this is what I like doing. This is actually the best thing, the best job, if I can call it a job, because it's a passion for me. And also, I, I really like it. I, I really like helping people finding their roots, finding all about Calabria because they don't know anything. People, even in, in Italy, they, even in Calabrians sometimes, living still here, don't know, don't know enough about the roots. They are not pride enough about the roots because you should know your history to know who you are, <laughs> you know, basically, and what, where you are going. This is, you know, everybody knows that. And um, anyway, into a few years ago, we set up, me with other colleagues, founded Zanatur, that is uh, focused in. Uh, um, basically uh, producing services for private people and as well for anyone who wants to enjoy Calabria off the beaten path, you know, of mass tourism. Because mm -hmm. we don't go to the usual hotels, we don't use the usual restaurants, you know, all, it does all, everything has to be special, you know, everything has to be special. A real, really Calabrian, a really true. This is my philosophy, my policy, my policy. Yeah, no, I, I and I, I think, I, and um, to your point about the um, the passion, I think those of us who do this stuff. I mean, I, I never thought I in a million years I'd be doing a a podcast about Italy and roots and things like that. Uh, but it does it, it does become a passion and. To your point, you know, two things with with me is I I enjoy helping people, but I also enjoy hearing the stories uh, about the families, like the one you told about your your uh, grandmother. Whoever knew that God created Calabria on the eighth day? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, we came up. We we come always to the, as the last, you know. Last but best. We are the best, you know. I mean, <laughs> the best, the coolest ones show up at the end in the parties. You know? <laughs> That's you know? right. Yes. The <laughs> uh, so you some things are true in Italy, some things are true in America. Right. You always want to be the last one there. Everybody notices you. Um, and, 
uh, yeah, and, and like I said earlier, I was uh, very surprised to, to know that and to find uh, cousins and to, uh, you know, actually there are still some, uh, I think at least two Piramalo homes. We don't own them anymore, unfortunately, uh, but there were still, uh, you know, palazzos in, in Calabria that, that were the families. And I am just dying to see them. And, and one of my cousins said that quite possibly she'll be able to get us inside one of them. Uh, but to see how, how, not just how people lived, but how your family lived, it, to me, it's a, it's a connection and a passion that I have to have. And not yes. everybody feels that way. Yeah, it, it will be emotional. I'll tell you, once you get to Calabria, it will be emotional. You'll be uh, crying, I'm sure. <laughs> Everybody does it. <laughs> I, right, and I told, my, I told my wife, I said, when we're in Naples, we're going to have to find something for you to do for half a day because I just want to go to cemeteries and look for the, look for the names of the family and, and take pictures. She thinks I'm... Yeah. How do you say crazy no, in Italian? Her, it's not the most enjoyable thing for her, going in the cemeteries. <laughs> pictures <laughs> for us it's something very interesting but i i understand you <laughs> uh, uh but she's her her mother's family is from shaka in sicily so we're gonna go there too so we'll, we'll see if she gets emotional when she's there <laughs> yeah um but th this is this has been a uh, great fun for me. I you know I love talking to everybody. I love giving people like you the uh, the opportunity to talk about your business. And so if somebody wants to get in touch with you to book you for a tour, hopefully this year, but if not, certainly next year. How would they go about doing that? Uh, they can contact me on uh, just send me an email. Okay, my website is uh, zanatour.com. And my email is Gianluca at zannatur.com. So you can uh, contact me on these two emails. Right. And also, uh, I know you have a great Facebook page with a lot of photos and videos that people could check yes, out. Yes, I have two pages, actually, because Zannatur, I must explain this, actually. Zannatur is the company. is the, is the registered company, you know. And uh, is, um, is, you know, the services are di directed mainly to other travel agencies, you know, like American travel agencies who, co who contact me so that I can help them with their clients. But as well, I have another um, website, tourguidescalabria.com. Uh, uh, this is the, the other website, tourguidescalabria.com and the Facebook page, Tour Guides Calabria, where I show a lot about Calabria. And that is for private people, for small groups and uh, individuals, basically, for the ones who want to experience Calabria with their own pace and uh, according to their own interests and uh, heritage as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. That's, fant that's fantastic. Um, well, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I, I hope things are going to get better there soon. Things are getting a little bit better here, but uh, you know, we still don't know when we're going to be able to travel. So yeah, but well, once you get vaccinated, you'll be able to to go wherever you like. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, my wife and I, both got our first shot. Uh, we go, uh, I go this Saturday, and she goes the following Monday. So okay. we should be good to go after that. Yeah. So um, I'll be waiting for you here in Calabria. Absolutely. I can't wait. I would love to take you to the Piromali Palace. <laughs> that's, a, that's, and, that's, a, that's a promise I'm going to make you keep. And film you while you are crying in front of, <laughs> of the phone call. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thanks again. Thank you, Bob.